This will probably be quite the entertaining video for people, as you're gonna see me get very angry with this topic, as, spoiler alert, this one is very personal to me. There's many different angles I wish to tackle this question, but first, let's take a look at what exactly I'm talking about. Back on the 16th, this meme was posted, and currently has around 18 million views. The image states, Accepting the existence of magic in a fantasy setting should not be easier than accepting the existence of disabled people in a fantasy setting. This is not a new conversation. In fact, I briefly brought this up in my gatekeeping video I made two or three years ago. But now I get to go more in depth. The two sides to this argument are what you would expect. One side talks about representation, another side talks about how you can resurrect the dead, much less cure paralysis. I'm not gonna pretend to be unbiased, let's stop wasting time and get right into it. The first argument, fantasy settings have healing and restoration, even revival spells. They can cure disease, blindness, all sorts of ailments, even make muscleless skeletons walk and move around. The idea that they would not be able to cure paralysis makes very little sense, especially considering that 90% of people are talking in a D&D setting. But okay, let's say that, because reasons, you cannot heal it. Why the hell do you have to use a wheelchair? You're in a fantasy setting. If there's steampunk elements, have someone craft something mechanical. Have a specially made saddle to use with a bear or a direwolf. Bring back one of my favorite memes from 2004. Be creative. Next, what class is going to be able to play in a wheelchair? Any martial class is out. They can't do anything from a constant seating position. And they'd have to drop the weapons in order to move the wheelchair. They'd just be a sitting duck. Mage class? Better hope they don't use a staff, because see above. But if they don't have a staff, they still gotta move their hands to cast spells, don't they? They'd be even more of a sitting duck, as their strength checks to move the wheels in the middle of a dense grass might fail. Contrary to what this buffoon on Twitter thinks, no, you can't just dodge things in a wheelchair. That's not how physics works. If you're thinking to yourself, they can use telekinesis to move the chair around. Really think about what you just said. If they can use telekinesis to move around their entire body and a really heavy chair, why not just use telekinesis to move their body? The next argument. But this is fantasy! You can make anything up! Why does it bother you so much? Oh boy, I am glad you asked. I present to you this image. You can accept dragons, elves, and talking trees, but you can't accept a 2021 BMW 5 Series 530i with optional heated seating. Why are you so bigoted? Fantasy, contrary to surface level thinking, does not mean you get to just make things up. Breaking your own rules, making the world nonsensical, these are the kinds of things that turn people off from a fantasy setting. They can't get immersed if there's holes everywhere letting the immersion out. Make a fantasy movie or TV show where everyone talks like 21st century teenagers. Do you think there won't be pushback? That people will not talk about how it takes them out of the setting? Do you know how many people complained in Game of Thrones about the speed at which characters flew across the map in seasons 7 and 8? It's because it went outside the boundaries that were set. This is one of the biggest drawbacks to fantasy writers, not knowing how to solidify what's in their imagination. Furthermore, why? In all the drawings I've seen of D&D wheelchair people, does everyone have a wheelchair that looks to be made in the 21st century? There's no creativity, no design. It's only a couple of steps away from the BMW example. You guys just straight up jacked the damn designs from modern day, flung it back untold centuries into the past, and expected everyone to say, yeah, okay, you guys are the ones lacking any creativity whatsoever. Honestly, if you went with any of my above suggestions, no one would have even batted an eye at a crippled character. Since they are in a wheelchair, how exactly are they going to go on adventures? How are they going to go through swamps or jungles, or slightly elevated bumps? Is the dungeon gonna have a wheelchair accessible ramp? Will the evil lich install a magic wheelchair lift for you to go up? Maybe he'll cast the same spell he uses to reanimate skeletons that have no muscles and limbs onto your legs so you can use them. There's another reason it's probably obvious to everyone else, but who exactly wishes for this in a fantasy setting? What is the type of person to ask for this? Could there be some through line with all of them? Is there any kind of word or ideology that we can use that will suddenly apply to nearly if not fully 100% of people who ask for this? Hmm. If we are to dive into the videos we've been making this past week, something tells me every single person who supports this wheelchair stuff will also be a supporter of Sweet Baby Inc. As the meme goes, it all comes back to Gamergate. This is the part of the video where jokes stop. I'm gonna take off the gameplay background so people can have better focus. So far, I've been making fun of these people a lot. We've all had a good laugh, but not everything is funny about this. 
I'll use two tweets to showcase what I mean before this becomes more personal. Warrior Posting responds to someone on Twitter who says, So you agree, the only reason able people want disabled people to be cured ASAP is because they're a liability. Pretty much treating people like tools who need to prove their worthiness to exist by providing. To which Warrior Posting replies by saying, Ask anybody who is in a wheelchair what they would do to use their legs again. If you lost your legs and could get them back, would you refuse? Think like your character is a person and not a token representation of disability. Another tweet from Eternal Inquisitor who says, Hi, someone who spent a chunk of his life in a wheelchair and wasn't supposed to, according to doctors, ever actually be able to walk. This kind of shit is not only unnecessary and absurd, it's harmful and makes people like me look like jokes. You shut your mouth. How does this tie in with me? A quick bit of history of the tea man. Tea wasn't my initial focus in my life's pursuits. It was martial arts. I had planned to fight in MMA and teach martial arts as a career path. Calling it a career path, however, severely downplays my relationship with martial arts. It wasn't a means of living, it was a way of life. It became something spiritual to me, something all-encompassing. Everything I did revolved around it, and the cultures that created it. It was a love for something I have not experienced anywhere else. In 2012, I suffered a severe break in my right arm. Nerves were damaged, and I was told I would never have use of my arm again. I was already poor. I couldn't work with one arm. Sure as hell couldn't afford surgery. They didn't help that I was given incompetent doctors, where they didn't even give me a cast for my broken arm, because the doctor scheduled to give me a cast when he went on vacation. Then promptly forgot I existed outside of trying to bill me. I couldn't do anything more than make my fingers slightly twitch. As far as I knew, I was now a one arm cripple, and my entire life's work has been thrown away. What did the other person say again? The only reason able people want disabled people to be cured ASAP is because they're a liability? Yeah, I was a liability. Over the course of the next year, in between my research in the best way to off myself and end this miserable existence, I researched nerves and nerve damage. I discovered that nerves could build new pathways through enough effort and some luck. Through sheer grit and determination, not to mention a miracle, I decided to go down that path and eventually found success. Found me some new doctors who also confirmed this, and when my bandages, again not my cast, my fucking bandages came off. The bone had healed a bit crooked, no surprise, but I was ready to start my recovery process. It took over a year for the arm to even resemble anything functional, but I eventually got, more or less, full use of it. It broke in 2012, but I would say it was not until 2014 that it felt what what might call normal. I felt I was reborn. I became a personal trainer and worked at the community center that I basically grew up in. My highest achievement as a trainer, ironically enough, was helping get an old man out of a wheelchair. But even that was all short-lived. I had grown to be stronger than I had ever been in my life. But due to other complications, related to my nerve damage, which led to awkward movement patterns in my upper body, which led to shoulder issues that eventually creeped up in my neck, I suffered some more physical setbacks in my neck. Despite never having actually suffered any head trauma or anything, when I got x-rays in my neck, I was told it looked like a 60-year-old who'd been in a car wreck. At this point, it felt like I had to face the reality. I had a good run, but it was time I give up on the illusion that I could make my life the way I wanted it to be. Really, it took another couple of years for me to come to that conclusion. I was stubborn, and it's not exactly easy to just say, okay, time to throw everything in my life away, and just start over with something new. It feels like everything's been a downward spiral ever since that arm break. It's not like I don't love tea or anime, but they were not my life's goals. So why did I decide to talk about this wheelchairs and cripples and fantasy setting? Because I take it personally. Very personally. It reminds me of when I had my life ripped away from me. When I was told I would have some ugly stump on the right side of my body for the rest of my life. And I would have to be a one armed man. These people. They want such a thing to be celebrated. They want cripples to be tokens for their virtue signaling. Hell, even now. When I do fantasy games, when I create characters like the one you saw earlier in the gameplay, wielding two massive weapons in each hand, that's my escapism from what happened, as I envision something more, something greater, not something lesser. If these people were around back then, whispering in my ear, I may have never even looked up to see if there was another path to get my arm back. People who have become crippled do not want to be crippled. They want to be able to be normal. They would love for there to be restoration magic so they could walk again, or move their hands again, or see again. With certain disabilities, like blindness, it can tie into the character as someone who found inner wisdom or something along those lines. It's why most blind fantasy characters end up being wise or mystical. But that's not what you are doing. That is not what you want. You want representation. This is why I'm done with only gatekeeping. It is time to find these kinds of people who already made their way inside the gates, grab them, 
and toss them over the walls. Don't even give them the dignity of leaving on their own terms. You are not good people for wanting to not heal disabilities. I'm done even pretending to tolerate you. And I'm slowly learning to be done with others who would tolerate you. I was so caught up in everything I forgot to actually shill myself. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Look at the links down below for my anime themed tea store. Buy yourself some tea. And help support this formerly crippled kid as he tries to find a new way in life. Or something along those lines. Or just give me some money to piss off the people who don't like this video.